Hello everyone, you're watching Physio Classroom channel and today we are covering a very important topic in muscle biomechanics which is active and passive insufficiency and I am going to explain and demonstrate practically to make this learning easy for the students. Now the first thing that we need to remember is that active and passive insufficiency is seen in muscles which crosses two or more joints. Now let's start understanding active insufficiency first by taking the example of a two joint muscle, let's say for example the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. Now as we know that flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus is the muscle of the flexor compartment of forearm which crosses the wrist joint and then inserts into the proximal and the distal phalanx. Now the main action of the FDP and the FDS is to flex the IP joints. Now let's first describe active insufficiency. Active insufficiency simply means that if a muscle is shortened or contracted at one joint then its ability to maximally shorten or contract at the other joint is significantly reduced. Now let's understand this with an example. Now if I ask Vartika to hold a pen in her hand and hold it as tightly as possible and I am trying to snatch it from you, do not let me do so. Yes, very nice, very nice. So you can see that she is able to apply considerable amount of force using her flexor muscles of the fingers. Whereas now if I shorten the FDP and FDS muscle at the wrist by flexing the wrist and now I asked Vartika to hold it as tightly as you can. Hold, hold, yes. And now I am trying to snatch it from you. Hold it there. I can very easily take the pen off her hand. Why it is so? It is so because the FDP and FDS have become actively insufficient at the fingers. Why? Because they have already shortened at the wrist. So let's recap. If a muscle is shortened at one joint, that means it is already contracted at one joint. So its ability to further shorten or contract at the other joint is significantly reduced and so the force generation by the muscle is less and this is known as active insufficiency. Now let's take two more examples to understand active insufficiency in a more simplified manner. So now let's take the example of the quadriceps muscle. So now what does the quadriceps does? It is also a two joint muscle and this is responsible for flexing the hip as well as extending the knee joint and we already know that if a muscle is shortened at one joint then its ability to maximally shorten or contract at the other joint is significantly reduced. So what we will do if we want to show the active insufficiency of the quadriceps we are going to shorten the quadriceps at the hip. So now the quadriceps is already shortened at the hip and now Vartika I want you to extend the knee extend 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 the force generation of the quadriceps is going to be much less because it is already contracted at the hip joint so it cannot maximally contract at the knee this is active insufficiency of the quadriceps now students at this movement should also try to keep the hip joint relatively extended and knee joint flexed and then ask their partner to extend the knee and what they are going to find is that the amount of force that will be generated by the knee joint will be much more. Why it is so? Because the quadriceps is not contracted at the hip so it can maximally contract at the knee joint. So Vartika, now can you please extend your knee? Yes, very nice. So her force generation has increased significantly. So like this one can easily demonstrate active insufficiency in any two joint muscle. For example, if someone asks about demonstrating active insufficiency in hamstring, so we can do the same thing. Now we know that hamstring is again a two joint muscle crossing the hip and the knee joint. It helps in extending the hip and flexing the knee. So to demonstrate active insufficiency of the hamstring, we need to first shorten the hamstring at the proximal joint. So Vartika, I want you to extend your hip. Very nice. And now as you can see that I have extended the hip. So the hamstring is already shortened now at the hip joint. So now the ability of the hamstring to contract or maximally shorten at the knee joint is going to be compromised. And this is what we mean by active insufficiency. So now let's see her power generation of hamstring when the hip is extended. So Vartika now try and bend your knee. Bend, 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 bend. The force generation is pretty poor as compared to if we make the hamstring actively sufficient. How we can do that? By flexing the hip joint. Now from this position, I want you to bend your knee back. 
band, 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 very nice. And what you are going to find is that hamstring is able to fire maximally, contract maximally. Why? Because it was not shortened at the hip joint. So now let's try and understand the concept of passive insufficiency. Now similar to active insufficiency, passive insufficiency is also seen in two joint muscles and it simply means that if a muscle is already lengthened at one joint, then its ability to elongate or lengthen maximally at the other joint is significantly reduced or compromised. So let's take example for the hamstring muscle. So now we are going to demonstrate the passive insufficiency in the hamstring muscle. So to make the hamstring muscle passively insufficient at the knee joint, we need to first elongate the hamstring at the hip joint. So if we maximally lengthen the hamstring at the hip joint by flexing the hip, the ability of the hamstring to elongate at the knee is going to be compromised or reduced and this is known as the passive insufficiency of the hamstring. So if we want to make the hamstring passively sufficient, we need to reduce the hip flexion and if we reduce it, we can see that hamstring can now maximally elongate at the knee joint. So if we need to demonstrate passive insufficiency in any two joint muscle, all we need to do is take the muscle at one joint into the maximum elongated position and then demonstrate the inability of the same muscle to elongate maximally at the other joint. So now let's take the final example of this video to demonstrate passive insufficiency and this time we are going to show passive insufficiency in the extensor muscles of the fingers. So the extensor muscles of the fingers crosses the wrist joint and the IP joint. So to demonstrate the passive insufficiency what we need to do? We need to elongate the finger extensors at the wrist joint maximally and now we, what we are going to see is that the ability of the finger extensors to maximally shorten at the finger is going to be reduced. So this is how we can demonstrate the passive insufficiency of the finger extensor muscles. Now students should only remember two words. Active insufficiency means inability to contract maximally and passive insufficiency means inability to elongate or lengthen maximally. Now when are these two situations going to arise? When the contraction or elongation has already taken place at the previous joint. Now students maximum times gets confused by giving this example because as you can see in the starting of my video I gave the same example but that time I was asking Vartika to hold the pen tightly and this time I was trying to elongate the finger extensor muscles by flexing the MCP and the IP joints. So to conclude, just observe this particular position and understand how we can demonstrate passive insufficiency of the finger extensors and active insufficiency of the finger flexors in this position. So you can appreciate finger extensors are lengthened at wrist so they cannot maximally lengthen at the fingers. Similarly, finger flexors are already shortened at the wrist and so their ability to maximally shorten at the fingers is reduced and therefore her grip strength is going to be much less. Try and hold my finger. Hold, 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 hold. She is not able to hold it. Why it is so? Because of the active insufficiency of the finger flexors and why she is not able to complete the range of finger flexion because of the passive insufficiency of the finger extensors. So this was all about the active and passive insufficiency and I sincerely hope I was able to simplify it for you all by giving lot of practical examples. Finally, don't forget to share our videos maximally with your contacts. Keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.